Um, I decided to change up my filming style for making one of these videos. So, let's give this a try. I feel like it's going to go horribly. So, I am going to make a full-on collection update. Literally everything I have. I was going to do like a um, separate like vintage and modern, but I feel like since everybody's asking for a collection update, I figured I'd do a full one. I'm not going to edit this as heavily as I did for um, the last one I made like a year ago. Because my collection has like basically tripled in size. I have no idea how many alarms I have. I'm really making this video to find that out. So, anyways, let's just get this started. The first set we have is the Kansas MB, one of the more iconic detectors. This is made in like 2000s, so this is a pretty early unit. This one is the XQRB, it's extra intelligent for no reason at all. And it says Nighthawk on the front, which is cool. And then we have the hardwired model. This one has, I'm pretty sure, I remember one of these being recalled. I forget which one though. But yeah, this is the hardwired version. Um, if you guys don't know my original Kansas USMB, it has a different voice compared to the other two. So, here we have some Kansas USMB BRFs. This is the Kitta version. This is actually a rebrand to this one. This is the original Home Hero. I'm including it with them. So, yeah. This is the HHCOS and BRF. So, really, nothing has changed. Yeah. And this one's really cool, by the way, because this one, this one has, like, a very interesting welcome message. So, you know, you guys want to hear it, do you? Congratulations, and thank you for choosing Home Hero. To start, please press the test button. You should hear smoke and carbon monoxide tests. Finish by registering at our website. Felicitaciones y gracias por elegir Home Hero. Para comenzar, presiona el botón de prueba. Debe escuchar las pruebas para el humo y el monóxido de carbono. Para finalizar, inscríbase en nuestro sitio web. So you pretty much get the idea. So it's, it speaks English and Spanish. The base just fell off. Oh yeah, that's right. Look at how small these um mounting brackets are. Very weird. Well, yeah, that's those. I'm gonna stop now because I'm gonna be going over this for a very long time. All right, next up we have these three, which are all on more wireless interconnect devices. RFSM. Thank God. RFSM. What was this again? RFSM ACDC, RFSM DC. These two are smoke alarms, and this is a smoke sounder. This is the RFSND. Very, very rare, by the way. Like, you have no idea. Let's, and I know you all want to hear this one too, because this one has a similar deal with the home hero. Congratulations on your purchase of a kit of product. Please push the test button. I'm not um, doing that right now. Yeah. Very interesting. So, yeah, this is a very rare unit. I got that fairly recently too. Next, we have the. I chose this one first. Can steal us some IBA hardwired with battery backup. This is the Can steal us some BA. That's battery operated. This one's also battery operated. The Can steal us some X. No. No, this is the IBA. See, I, I should have noticed that. I'm getting these mixed up already. Yeah, this is the Canadian version. It speaks English and French. It's hardwired also. And then here is the Kansiosum XTRBA. Again, extra intelligent for no goddamn reason. Nobody understands why. And then next we have two of these I4618As that I got from Nick. Um, I have th I actually do have three of these, but one of them is going to Nathan. So, yeah, that's that. And then here is one of the most basic alarms of all time. I4618AC. And then here's one I got from my 15th birthday. Can't see OPEIC, which is actually, here's the very interesting part. This one was manufactured on Christmas Day. So that's really cool about this one. Alright, so let's just start with my, a couple of my carbon monoxide alarms. I'll start with the Can -C -O -P, the P, I see, not P E, just P. Um, very satisfying buttons, by the way. I know another YouTuber had one of these as well. I got this in my one year special. Um, this one came from Oliver. 
the Scrap Boy, if you know him. This is a Can Seal. Come on, focus. There we go. Can Seal BBLPM. This is the older version of this, pretty much identical, except it takes two instead of three batteries. The Can Seal BLP2. Here's the display version. The Can Seal PPBLPM. And then here is a plug in version. The can seal be DP2 and it is heavily screwed up. So, yeah. Um, I don't really care for that one anyway. Didn't even come new in box. This next one is a weird one. This is the can seal PFI. This is rechargeable battery backup, which annoyed the heck out of me. Which, in this case, I had to deactivate it. I didn't make a video on deactivating this thing, but. It basically chirped a million times before it, yeah. But I imagine this will still work on its hardware AC plug-in, so I'm not too concerned on it. I've never tried that, but I don't know where the harness is. Yeah. It's a very weird unit. And if you know Lucky Home Settings on Instagram, made a post on who can find the Cancel PFI on Home Settings. Yeah, nobody's ever found one. And then we'll go for some more carbon monoxide ones. We got another weird one. Here's the Canceal BHW. The weird thing about this one is it just takes two wires, no interconnect, and also it's only two screws to mount it. Like no, no base whatsoever. This came brand new in the box, and there's no base, and they expect you to stick wires through a drilled hole. Very, very weird design, and I don't know if I like it exactly. And here we have another weird one. I mean, weird because of its color, but in other terms, if you're just seeing a white one of these, it's just very basic, but it's a gas and CO, like explosive gas and CO. This is a very obnoxious alarm, by the way. <laughs> and here's a little secret. It can go off when you fart. So, yeah. Very, 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 very weird Unix, but especially for its color. Yeah. Still pretty cool, though. And then we got the last of my, or a couple more of my carbon oxalums. I forgot this one. This is an older, kind of, I don't know what this is. It's like a very weird can seal BBLP. Very, very strange. I don't have the display version of that, though. And then we have um, a bit of cooler carbon ox alarm. This one has a display, and it talks. Has the standard kit of voice, of course. It's not on, I don't think. No, it is not. Yeah, so... Yeah, I really like this one. It's um very nice Carbonox line. Nicely designed for a plug-in. And then we have my favorite one of them all. My favorite Carbonox line of all time. This one right here. I just unplugged it off my wall. The Can COB DP10YH. What's really cool about this one is that it actually has a light on it. And it actually illuminates when it ta when it goes off. Which, why is there no escape light combination alarm if this exists? Like, not even First Alert did that. I don't think anybody did that, actually. Not even X-Sense, I don't think. But, yeah, it's got a display, it's got a light, really, really cool. And you can set this up as a night light as well, so that's what's really cool about this one. And now we have the very legendary Kid A True Sense series. Or as we now like to call them, False Sense, after their recall. I made a video on all five of these, or I went over all five of these, if you want to check that out. Um, but I'm just going to go over them briefly. This is the 2040 DSR, pretty rare. 2050 DS10, another very rare one. The back of this is actually like an i9010, by the way. This one's not exactly the same as an i9040, but... This one has the shell of an i4618. This is a, um... What is it? 2040... No, 2060 ASR, and it has, says Fire X on the back, which is the only one that has that. Here's the most common 2070, the 2070 VDSR. This one talks and it has a different voice. And then here's the hardwired combination version. Um, the 2070 VASCR. Um, again, with a different voice. Do you want to hear what it sounds like again? You can check out my video. Also, the side vents are not exactly the same as the CAN CO PEIC does. They're a different design. It's very weird looking. But yeah, those are these are those are very weird units and they were all recalled by the way. 
aside from the 3050 DS10, whatever the model number, I forget, but those were known to be ex not even existed, but someone was selling six of them on eBay, and that completely confirmed that they do exist. So now, let's go to Kida's most hated smoke alarms, the P3010s. P3010 L, P3010 KCO, and the P3010H, which is actually broken. Also got that on my one year special. And now that we're here, I might as well just talk about the Kida's most disappointing and ugly alarm of all time. This stupid thing. The Kida 900 CUAR. Disgusting. I really hate this thing. It's... Why do I even have this? Oh, because I have to review it, because I'm a very popular enthusiast. That's why. Okay, enough with this rant. We're going to go to the P40-10s next. I actually have a lot of P40-10s. I have these three. I actually move on to this one. Actually, we'll do this one, because this one actually is kind of like the same deal with the CUAR. This is the um, P40-10 ACSCO-WF. I should actually make you guys look at this one first. This is the um, ACSCO-W. Um, this one's just a standard one. has a bug grill. Keep that in mind. And this is a bridge unit wireless interconnect. And this is the escape light version, about smoke only. The LACS-W. Um, so this one. This is the one that you can connect to the Kita app. And it's basically like their version of the safe and sound and nest protect. Except it's not unique at all. It just uses the shell of... It is, in that case, they could have used the COAR shell to make it connect with the app, to make it look different. Because, like, this one's not unique. Also, no bug grill. Why? Why? People do rumor that it does have something to do with the Wi-Fi connectivity, but still, that is, if that's the case, then why? Because they also lack that in the 900 COAR, but... Enough of this rant, putting them away. We'll just go over the escape light one. I mean, strobe light version quickly. This is the APCLADSCO-2. This is not bridge operated. No wireless interconnect whatsoever. Although I feel like that could have been implemented. Although battery operated version of this would not exist at all. Because strobe light requires one of volts. And then we have my DCS-W, the smoke only battery operated wireless. The combination battery operator wireless, the DCSCO-W, and then the smoke-only um, escape light wireless interconnect, the LDCS-W. And that's all my P4010s. I did also forget to mention that those actually have a grandma voice. So, um, yeah, I call it the grandma voice because it sounds like a grandma voice. So we have three similar arms here. These two are actually exactly the same. Um, we have two Kida i90-10s, and then we have the older version, the 0910, that was installed in my old house. And then we have a similar one, um, not really similar, but like it tests the same exact way. i1040, it's pretty much the same size as an i9040. Speaking of, we'll get that to that one next, but first I'm going to go over this i9030 thing I have. This is actually a Garrison 46-0081-8, look at the goofy eye bracket. Yeah, this is an i9030 rebrand. And now we have the i9040. Very cheap alarm. We have another one here, except it's the i9040E, which, don't quote me on that, that's literally what it's called in some cases, but it says i9040 on the back. It just has a bigger base. And then we have the Canadian version with the brown text around the button, which I think is really cool. Some of these actually do 4.6. So, yeah, i 940 ci then we have the P9050. I don't have the I9050, unfortunately, but, um, yeah, this is just a P9050. You see, it says photoelectric on the side. Uh, my uncle gave this one to me. Um, next we have the I9060CA. This came from Nathan. I got this in my big, massive unboxing for the 1K special. Then we have an I9070CA. Pretty cool. Um, 
Yeah, that's Canadian. I actually do have a regular i9070 right here. This came from Leah Woods. And yes, I said that because this is a very weird one. Because this is a mod. If I'm going to throw in a testing clip of this now. So this does 4.6, and I will prove to you that this is a brand new i9070 made in 2021, I believe. Yep. And then that's just a regular i9070, not Canadian whatsoever. So no chance of this doing 4.6 unless you do a mod, which in this case it was. So, yeah, this is a very, very interesting unit. And then I feel like now that we're here, since it looks similar, we have the P9040, the photoelectric equivalent to the I9040, although it looks like they squished an I9010 in half. And also, the both these buttons, even though one says hush, they both act as test buttons. So, yeah. And then we have, now that we're here, the Garrison I9080 or the 4600 I actually have both Mastercraft versions of this, which I'll be showing in a later part. Something I did also forget to show is this one. This is the Kido 0914 made by um, Lifesaver or Firenetics or something like that. This is just an older one, so I figured like, I showed that off. And I forgot to show off my C3010s. Um, which are both really interesting, or at least I think they both are. This is, um, also this one first. This is the non-display version. These are very common out in the field. If you go in, like, random places, you'll see these random alarms just, like, scattered around everywhere. Even my school has these. Um, yeah, this is the C3010. And then this is the C3010D display version. And these are, um... What's it called? These are um, both, they have a very interesting feature where they want go quiet first and then they become loud. As when you test them, it's very strange. So, yeah, I made a video, I made an unboxing video on these. I made an unboxing video of most of my alarms, so yeah. Move those out of the way. And then I'm going to show you my first ever smoke alarm that I got. The PI-9000. By the way, these are recalled. Yeah, my very first smoke alarm. Now we are off to the i120 series of alarms, starting with these two. Or actually, this one first. This is the i120 10S. I got from a lot five on eBay. You guys probably seen that video. And then here's the Canadian version i120 10S CA. Nothing different about it. And then here's the My Pleasure alarm, or AKA the i120 10S CO CA. I mean, no, i120 10S CO. I'm stupid. This is the i120 10 SCOCA, and it's upside down. The French, my pleasure. You guys love the drive through memes. I remember them back in the day. And then now we have the Kida i120 20. Pretty sure. Yep, this is the i120 20. No battery backup, just hard hard. Here's the one that actually has battery backup, the i120 40. I'm pretty sure I have every single alarm from the i120 series. So, yeah, this is the um, i 2040. And then here's the Canadian equivalent, the i 2040 ca Or, actually, yeah, they're i 2040 a And then here's the P12040, the photoelectric version. And then here is the Canadian equivalent. Pretty much all the Canadian alarms I got are either from Nathan. Yeah, it doesn't say photoelectric, but it, there's a photoelectric label right here. And then now we have the um, famous i12060 um, A. There is an I regular i12060, but it's older. This one says A because it's new and I'll prove it to you. See? The older versions are just i12060. This one's i12060A, so it's newer. And then we have two Kida i12080s. I still have not done the mod on one of my i9040s, but... Yeah, one of these is from Ethan, one of them, the other I got for my birthday. Um, Ethan, aka the Smoke Alarm fan, by the way. Um, yeah. And then we have this one right here, the HD61... Th I'm stupid. The HD135F. That actually came from Nathan, by the way. Um, yeah, I'm kind of stupid with my model numbers. I'm kind of... Yeah. Anyways. That is, um, part one complete. Of all my kid alarms, I'll show off my first sore ones next. 
I'm just gonna try to keep this modern. I'm just gonna start with the most boring one of them all, the SA350. Actually, I think it's the model. I think it is the model. Oh no, it's 0827. Yeah, currently off. It's off. Now we have the P1210. These are the slimline alarms. Here's the first gen variant. Got from my uncle. Yeah, they look weird. Do they? At least the first gen one does. Okay, a bit of searching around. I found it. This is, has a little dot. It's the escape light. It's an LED. It's a lot brighter than you think, actually. Not the brightest in the world, but yeah. Finally found it. Here is the PC1210, the combination version of the regular P1210. And then next one we have this one. Yeah, you thought it was the PC1210V, did you? This is the new PC1210 with the new logo. I got this fairly recently. You can see a little bit of a difference. Okay. Now we got the female manual. Here's the PC manual alarm. Um, or at least not the iconic ones, but like, this is just the female version. Ow. Yeah, this is the PC1210V, V for voice. And what's cool about these, you can select your location. So, yeah, there's really not much about it though. I have six P1210s in my collection. All right, now we're gonna start with um, this one, 9120V. First one, 9120V. These are actually pretty decent home alarms right now. Fairly decent. And then I have the smoke and CO version right here, the SC9120B. Buttons are very clicky. Here's the heat alarm version, which has a different test button. The HD6135FB, that's what I meant to, that's what I was saying earlier with the other heat alarm I had. I have a few more heat alarms, but those are all vintage. So you can stick around for those. And then here's the carbon monoxide only version. The CO5120BN. Very rare unit. And then that CO5120BN, you thought that was it? Oh no, I got a very rare one to show you. This is the CO5120PDBN. Very, very rare. And this actually came out of one of my dad's office buildings before it got demolished. So yeah, a Dover elevator was there too. It did not survive, but this did. And yeah, good thing I got it because like these are incredibly rare to come across. Like you guys have no idea. Now we're going to have to go off to the, um, something similar, the photoelectric versions, 7010B, very basic alarm, but pretty good, 7020B, very rare, by the way, nowadays, I don't know why, and I might as well just show off the SA710 and SA720, since they're basically the battery operated versions. And then here's another 9120B that's a much worse condition. And now that we're here, I might as well show you the um, 3120B. The shut the up alarm. The famous McDonald's. Yeah. This one's actually a pretty good du dual sensor alarm. Um, yeah. They made new versions of those, by the way. I think. All right, now we're gonna go off to some, we got not one, not two, but three SA303s. Get those out of my sight, get off my screen. And then we have a slightly more interesting one, the SA304. What's weird about this one is that when you test it, you have to wait through a whole round of code three before the escape light actually comes on. So yeah, I feel like that's a little bit of a nuisance by the way. All right, now we're gonna go to a, um, an interesting one, we have a bridge, a bridge unit, SA520. This one does not talk, and it does not have a low frequency sounder. I feel like that could have been implemented, but I guess that would have been too much for her alert to handle. But then again, they have the better alarms than Kitta does. So, yeah, that's the SA520. And you're probably wondering, what alarms do those interconnect with? Well, I'm about to show you right now. PC manual. These are the famous PC manual alarms. This is an SA five eleven. I have two of them. I don't know where the other one is. 
But yeah, I actually don't know where the other one is. But, here we go. Please see my nail trilogy. Oh, no, I see it. Oh, no. Oh, I forgot about this one. Um. Oh, no, I see it. <laughs> trying to find my please see manual arms. Um. Yeah, here we go. We got two SA511s. And I just took one. Where is it? Oh, yeah, here it is. SCO500, the smoke and CO version. And then the CO511, the carbon oxide only version. Which is um, interesting because it had a different logo compared to the other ones. So, yeah, move those out of the way. The CO511 is actually pretty rare, too. And then we have um, the French manual. This is the SC7010 BVA. This came from Nathan. Big thanks to him for that because I actually really wanted one of these at the time. Pretty cool unit. Now we're going to go a little bit older. We're going to go to this one right here. The Smiley Face SA67B. This is an older one, the SA67D. Very boring vintage alarm. I'm not going to go too far on that one because we're not vintage yet. We're still at 2000s. And then we have the SC150B. This one has light test and it has an escape light on it. And by light test, I mean like you could shine a flashlight at it. Here we have two plug-in for sort seal alarms. This one's the... This one's the 600, I think. Yeah, the CO600 with no battery backup. This one's the CO605 or the 606. It's one of the two. Here's another first solar one I forgot to show. This is the CO710. And the cool thing about this one is it has a display that tells you the temperature. And as you can see, it's 71 degrees in my room. Oh, we have this goofy off thing. We have this Canadian BRK for Sawyer 7010B auto. In this case, it's like, it's a 7010BA, but on the box it said like, um, a, like a 77, no, what was it again? I don't know. I forget what it was. Here's one I almost forgot. The SC7010LBL, I think? LBLV, that's what it was. Um, yeah, this says the female voice, by the way. This one lastly. One Link made cooler versions of this. I kind of scratched it up a bit. Oh, what the heck? Yeah, gotta, gotta clean that off. Alright, whatever. Yeah, this one talks. And it is still on. I don't know how it's never false yet. And then we probably have the most high-tech one of them all. The One Link Safe and Sound. I still have not connected this to the app. I'm sorry. I was going to do that when I got it. But I really had no interest on doing this again. Because I really, I struggled for hours trying to get this hooked up. I don't know why. Now I'm going to show off my USI collection, which I have like no USIs. I have like only three. Here's, I'm just going to show off my modern one, which I fried because the harness, I'm like, bruh, it does not work anymore. I snipped the wires. So yeah, this one's garbage now. And I think, I forget the model of this. I think it was like MIC 1509 or something. And then we have the 5204 right here. And then I have the combination version, which actually is pretty interesting to come across. The 7795. This one has a clicky button, unlike the other one. Yeah. This is USI. And I have a couple other USIs, like, but those are, or not, I don't think they are USIs. Like, it's universal branded. It's a vintage alarm that I'll show later. I'm just getting ready for the next alarms. Um, I'll just show off this one by Last Universal. This is a very interesting one. This is the SS770? No, 700A, I'm stupid. Yeah. I'm pretty sure this is probe-based. I think it came with the probe type base. Yeah, this is 101 based. Pretty rare unit, too. I think I'm one of two. I, I'm not sure how many people own one of those. Now I'm gonna show off my Family Guard collection. Um, including the vintage one I have. Um, we're just going to start off with this one, the FG2 dollar, the cheapest one of them all. FG250 A, this is Canadian. And then the FG888 D, I have like a million of these, not even funny. Yeah, my Family Guard A3R. For now, I'll show off my vintage Family Guard, a very rare one too. This one came from Nathan, FG1000 CLA. Here's my 83R, right here. This one does 4.6. And it also came from Ethan, by the way. Okay, a lot of intense searching later. I finally found my Wake and Warn. 
first generation 055103. And then I'll show you my other Wake and Warn I have. This one's incredibly rare, by the way. Um, this one's a um, Citrus 19-76. Um, looking upside and got me this. It's a funny chick mail thing. But yeah, this is 77R base. This one's got the Squealer. Kobishi Steel B27, I believe. Yeah, pretty cool. And I forgot to show this one off. The First Lord SC01. Or the Skoy. Or Sko1. Or Logan Haunts' Worst Nightmare. Might as well show this off too. My 0914 10X Edition. My 0915 10X Edition. And then my... Oh, now on six, non Tynex edition. All right, I'm just gonna show off some of my miscellaneous things. Here's my X Sense. Um, yeah, X Sense, and then here's yeah, that's the SCO five, I think. Let me just double check. No, SCO three. There you go. Very interesting unit. And then we got these X Sense First Lord Adam knockoffs. Oh my god, I forgot to show off my First Lord Adam. I'll show that off next. Um, yeah, these are um, very interesting. I have six of these. I'm not pulling them all out right now. But yeah, th those are wireless interconnect units. And then here's my first solar atom, or at least one of them. This is my P1010. Lithium ion, although not anymore. Alright, now I'm going to show off my goofy off first solar atoms. We have three. This one's in copper. Probably my favorite one of them all. This one's in silver. And this one is in a very, very rare Kentucky Wolf Oak. Actually, these are all rare, I should probably. But this one is the one that we formerly did not think. Is. This is not cherry wood, by the way. Cherry wood's more red. This is not red. This is brown. Kentucky Oak Wood, as we found out. Very, very rare. And also, I love the sound these things make. It's like the beep, beep. Awesome sound. Probably the best piezo sound effect. Yeah, very, very cool. Um, here's my ESL Daring Dibble. Some of you like to call it as an inside joke, although for some reason it's not. And then we have the newer version, the 449 CT Daring Dibble. And then um, this weird one. This is all. This came from Leah Woods. This is a 320M, I think. I forget the model of this. It's an ESL 320 or something like that. It has like a bluish horn in there. Y'all ready for some Fire X? Because I'm certainly not. We have not one, but two. And I guess if you count the one Ethan has, three FireX FADCs. I'm not counting the one Ethan has. If I did, um, I would have had all three versions of the FADC. Um, because this one's the newest one of them all. The black text ramp up. This one's the red text ramp up. Although for some reason it's made in 01, I think. But it still does ramp up, so red text ramp up. And then there was a red text non ramp up that Ethan got. So I'm not counting that for my collection. That's his that's his alarm and nobody else's. Oh okay, so I'll show off the um Okay, as you can tell as you could hear it's starting to rain. Alright, now we're gonna start with the interesting FADCs or the interesting FireX 2000 alarms, the FADCM, twelve thousand. Is the item number? There's the back. Yep. FADCM. This one does the longer test sequence, unlike this one, which I'll go over in a second. This one does the beep, 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 beep. Yeah. These things are so loud, also. I cannot, I never wanted to test this again because of how loud this piezo element was. I feel like it was louder than 85 decibels. This thing was super loud. This one has a black horn, by the way. Um, yeah, FADCM. All right, now we're gonna go with something even rarer than the FADCM, the FADCQ. Truly one of the smoke alarms of all time. Thunder. So yeah, this one has a white horn inside of it. This one has the printed FireX letter on it, not the embroidered one. And this one has five LEDs, I kid you not. There's three here. Then red, orange, and yellow. There's a green for the AC power. And then there's a blue for CO, which I still really like the blue light. It's really cool. 
So what happens when fire actually tries to innovate? They overcomplicate their alarms. For example, the TPCI. This is a very stupid design in my book. This one's like, this is not hardwired at all. This is like, you should guys see the unboxing video of this. I was so confused of when I, of when I was looking at this. This thing is so weird. I did not understand this thing at all. I can't even explain it. Like, I'm sorry. I, I don't know. I, you'll have to watch my video on it. I barely even made a video on it. And then we'll go to the heat alarm next. The ADH. Yeah. Very yellowed, by the way. Very yellowed. Also, though, those have no ramp up. And then we'll go to the COE that's in here. Very interesting looking device. And the battery door actually swings open like this, unlike the slide open battery door. And then we got the Fire X6040, or the COQ6 actually, I should say. A very weird, this is also a very weird looking device. Now we're going to go to some older Fire X alarms. We got my ADC that came from PI9010 Instagram user. Um, this one has black text, made in 07. Very rare. Yeah. And it's really good in condition, by the way. This one does ramp up. Um, not going to test that, though. Um, yeah. Very, very cool. And then we got the photoelectric equivalent, the PAD. This one's actually a lot older. To 01. Yep. PAD. I used to have two of these because of the FADCM scam that happened to me a minute ago. But that one's also in Leo Woods' collection. And then we have an older one, the Fire X AD. We're going a lot older here. Um, there's the date code. Some of you, I don't know Fire X date codes that well. It's not hard to figure out, but I've never seen to memorize them that well. 23 minutes. Now we got our GC, Fire X GC, and then a Fire X G6. Not much to say about those, except those are really faulty horns. Um, and then next is the Fire X. That's not the FX-1218. That's also not the FX-1218. Where did I put my FX-1218? What the heck? I just, oh, it's right here. Here's the Fire X FX-1218 with the piezo. And now I'll show you something a little bit older. Um, actually, a little lot older. This is not 1020 or 1014. This is an FXW-1A. This is the AC buzzer. The, bzzz, the sound alarm. Very interesting. And then we have a similar one. FX830. Very rare, by the way. This one's a um, white test button version. That's battery operated. Very interesting unit. Yeah. And now that we're here, I'm going to show off a couple of my other... That's not Firex, I just realized. Okay, move these out of the way. Um, next we have the Firex CB. I think this one has Hush. This one doesn't. I don't think I might be getting these mixed up. This is the Firex C, 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 C. Next we have the C, E, C, E, C, E, C, E, C, E, C, E, C. Next we have the... CCPB, CCPB, and that one does not go as well. But yeah, this one's the dual sensor version. This one's the escape light, and then these two are pretty much identical. This one's a bit, the next one's a bit more interesting though. This is a Coleman Shelter Firex CGC. No battery backup. Actually, I can do it here. CGC, GC, GCC. Oh, that, that one's the one that you could trick on. Ow, God, I hate these wire terminals though. I'm pinching myself every time. And now we'll move those out of the way. That was my only Coleman, by the way. We're going to go to these Code 1 models next. Hi, first of all, Adam. You're not invited. Here's the Code 1 AD. This one's a very interesting one. This one does Code 3, and it's actually made very late. 04. Um, a couple of people have bought my listing that I have on eBay. Um, Jan Aiton bought one of these, and someone else bought four. I don't know who, though. Next, we have the Code 1 2000 Model G. The Code 1 Model A in really bad condition. And 
and then the Code 1 G18. Let me get out of the way of the light. Yep. This one's a really cool one, by the way, because I love the blue lens on this one, or green lens, whatever you want to call it. Anyways, next we have the the Jameson the Jameson CD32, and then we have the Jameson equivalent to the um, FX1020, or 1014, or the FXW1, or whatever has the wire term terminals, I don't feel like bringing it up right now. The Jameson... CD2, it's on my door, the CD1, the battery operated um, with the door, I have it on my door, that's why the thing is there, it's kind of like a little decoration piece. Okay, now we're going to go, I forgot to show off a couple of these, here's an FCD3N, I forgot to show that one off, that one came from my uncle, and now I'm going to show off, it's raining right now, so we're going to have some background noise, yay, ruins my video. I'm going to show off a few more miscellaneous. I don't think I showed all these yet. Um, before we get into the actual goodies. Citadel GS528A. Citadel SSD1. SSSD1. Watchdog, whatever. Signal 1 Safety Vocal. This is one of the first smoke alarms I made a video on. This sorry excuse for a Christmas ornament smoke alarm. I'm counting that as one smoke alarm, by the way. Um... And then the Probe 601. This one's actually a better one. And then I'll show off my Nest Protex. Here's the first generation. Here's a second generation version. I have three of these. Um, the other one is mounted. Look at the mess I made. Over there, that's the other second gen. This, this is the same exact thing, by the way. And then we have that one up there, the black one, very rare. And I'll show off my smoke detectors, I'm going to count those too. That's the 2400. And there's my Edward heat detector. And then my i3 is somewhere, I don't know where it is though. Found my i3. i3 to WB. And now I'm going to clean up, because I still got more to show. Okay, starting off with um, some alarms that are just like, I'm not really going in any particular order anymore. I'm just going to show this one off. This is like a 6040, but like not. This is a very strange Jameson model CD1, or CO1, I'm stupid. Yeah, this is a very weird unit. Um, and then we have, okay, so now we're just going to show off my... SA60, my other SA6070, I hope this is the other one. I have two of these. I showed off the other one earlier. So. Yeah, that's that one. And now since this next one's up on the wall, I have to pick up my camera. Um, so next we have an SA90LT. This one has light test. And then we have the SA150LT that's on my wall right now. I can't take it down. This one also has light test, but it also has an escape light built in. So. Okay, I have a lot of 2000s style kiddos. I'm just going to start off with these classic ones. This is an 0915. This is an 0916. Another 0916. This one's Tynex Edition, and it says Nighthawk. Another 0916, the same exact thing, except it does 46, the other one does code 3, and an 0918. So that's on my um, 2000s Kiddo battery operated with those same design. And here's a similar one that I'm going to show you guys in a second. This one's also Tynex Edition, but it also has this design. But notice the base. It is hardwired. And it actually does code 3, so it's a transitional type model. Yeah. That's a very rare unit, by the way. And then we have, yeah, that's also, the, oh, I forgot to mention, the model is 1275, and we have another 1275, this one's also Tynex Edition. Um, I forget this is on eBay, I think. Oh, no. No, this is, oh, no, this, I'm stupid, this is a 1235. Um, this one uh, was Ethan's 1235, that does 4.6. Here's another Tynex 1235. 
This is also um, Tynex, uh, yeah, Tynex Edition. Um, this one's the one that came from... Who gave this to me again? I forgot. Came from someone. Jack Williamson, that's who it was. Um, this is a, yeah, 1235. This one does cut three. And then now we have an actual 1275. Again, Tynex Edition. Um, this one's the newer one. And then here is the newest 1275, which for some reason is on a newer kit of base. But it's there. This one's a regular 1275, no diamond grill. And then we have the 1276. This one pretty much is the older i 90 i one twenty sixty. O nine seven six. Um, very boring, just a battery operated version. And then the twelve eighty five with the escape light. Again, also on a newer kit of base for whatever reason. Yeah, there you go. That's all my um two thousand style kit is. We're nearing the end of this masterpiece. Now we're on BRK. We're showing off most of my BRKs until I forget another one. Um now, um, we have a third generation 86RAC. Um, this one does, this is the one that does code 3. Where's the other one? I had another, oh, it's right here. Here's the second generation version 86RAC, the one that does 4.6. Next one, we have the BRK 1839N, the iconic Edigo 1839 Nightmare Fuel. Um, I forgot, I forgot to show this one. This one has the pushing terminals. Here we have more Nightmare Fuel. This is the 1839i. Different base, but still the same. Pretty sure that's the recall model. Here's the BRK 1839 ACI. This is not Nightmare Fuel, but it has the buzzer. I used to be scared of these. Um, but, yeah. 1839 ACI. I was excited to have my first buzzer alarm. Yeah, again, pushing terminals. Here's a BRK 83R. Oh, why am I showing that one? This is not with this lineup. This one's the one I'm supposed to show first. The BRK 769 ACI. I'm missing the 1769 still. I have yet to get one. That one came from Jack Williamson. Um, here's the BRK 83R. Now I'll show this off. One of many BRK 83Rs I have. I have the Waken Warren. I have a Family Guard. I have literally everything. Now we have this one, the BRK 2839N, the photoelectric equivalent to the 1839N. And then we have the 2839ACWI-12, I think. Oh, no, just ACWI. Okay, yeah. Um, one of them came off eBay, another one came off Jack Williamson, I forgot. And then here we got one of my favorite BRK alarms. The 79R, this one's not just any 79R though, this one came from Ethan, the Smoke Alarm Fans Collection. And then here is the very weird BRK FACO I have. This is one of my first vintage Smoke Alarms actually. Here's another 79R, but it's Montgomery Ward this time. The model number of that is 84 7 And now we'll go into a couple more first alerts. Here's a first alert SC67D first generation with the white button. I have three of these, I'm selling one, and another one's going to Nathan. Here's a BRK, no, First Alert SA76RS, or in this case, it's a Smoke Alert. This came from JDL Productions. Alright, we'll go to, um, we'll go to this one, Pyrotector Guardian, this is the Pyrotronics Guardian FB1A, 46008381-8, I kid you not, that's the model number, that's the same model number as the Garrison I-9030 I showed you earlier. Yep. And then we have the Escape Light version. The Daikon 350 rebrand, Mastercraft, 46083-4. Again, the same exact model number as the Garrison i 80 I showed you. So, yeah, that's that. Also, um, this came from Nathan. This came from Adam. This one also came from Adam. This is an American Sensor COS 2010. He had three of these. One of them is in Nathan's collection. He has one, and then I have another. Here's a really interesting one. This is a... Th oh, this is just a... Th oh, never mind. This is not what I was thinking of. I pulled this out thinking it was the... This is a Daikon 330 LSG, I believe, the model. Here's the 330SH whatever. Yeah, 330SH. I forget the model no number. This is a heat alarm plus smoke alarm. And this one's not 120 volts, I was told. So I never tested this. 
buttons feels a lot different. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's all my um, Diagon slash Mastercraft stuff. Now we'll move on to Honeywell. Um, okay, that's kind of stuck. We'll go to my TC49A, the only one I have. Um, but if I open up the cover, this is a TC49A1021. If I can open this cover, you can see it's got the yellow sticker and the, um, if you look at the side here, you can see this is basically the square version, except it has, um, a round cover on it. So I thought that, I thought, I didn't know this the first time I bought it, because I basically saw this and I was like, oh, I want this. Like, I've always wanted a TC-49A, because this is pretty, a very iconic detector. And then we got a similar one. Um, this one's battery operated with a test button. TC-89B. Um, this was supposed, this is in Throgs' collection, basically, but I'm counting it as in mine, because he comes over every here and there. We're close friends, so I get to show him this every once in a while. I got to show Ethan this as well, so, yeah. I basically hold on to this, so I'm pretty much counting this in my collection, along with the CGC. Yeah. Pretty cool. So I was collection is basically my collection too, so yeah. He buys it with his money though. But yeah, TC 89B. And also two of them I used to own. This one in particular um, has the Edwards horn on it, as you can see. Um, well, the other one that I had had a Kobishi COB27. Um, that one I sold, and I'm pretty sure it went to, I know who it went to, it went to Aiden. Um, the same person who got that big lot that you guys might have saw in that one video with the 206 and D2. Speaking of D2, that will be the future one that I'll be showing you. So, yeah, enough of the Honeywells. Now we're going to go on to some C4s. We're going to go on to, that's, uh, we'll show the Black and Decker ones first. Here's the SMK6D, I believe. I actually forget the model. It was 60M3, I think. This one's 60M1. This one looks like the GE. Yeah, I think the model, the model number's somewhere, I don't know. Yeah, they're very similar units. This one has the test button in the middle, and it actually doesn't have open grills, this one. So that's kind of interesting. And then, where's the other one? Oh yeah, here we go. Here is the GE. This one has the satisfying test button. This one has a different kind of circuitry. Here's the GEC4 or 8201-401C. And then here we have a very a kind of rare one. This one's a again test 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 button. Um 8201 no. 8202 What was the model of this again? 82023 No, that that's not it. It's the line cord version. What was this? I forget. Alright, whatever. Um, yeah, I forget the model of this. Whatever. Um I'll figure it out eventually. Um but I really don't have time because I'm running out of space. So yeah, that's that. Here we have an early guard EGD1C, I think. Yeah, EGD1C. Pretty cool unit. Oh, I forgot. Oh, that's I forgot to show off Jameson. CD23. It's got a blue horn and a yellow skip light. I really like that actually. Um, and then I have another. I have a lifesaver. FYCO1N, I think. Yeah. God, I completely guessed that, and I got it right. And then we'll go and get out some more lifesavers. Um, I have a bunch of different ones. I have the 0905, 1225, this is actually one of my favorites. First generation F900D. And then the last one's in here. Oh, I forgot to show up another Jameson. The 0908. And then here is the RS-1 Jameson that I have. The other one's in Itigo's collection. Get these out of the way for my last few alarms. 
And then the Radio Shack 49-466. It's a very weird one. And then we got the massive Teledyne Waterpig D1. Or the 7X D11 apparently this one is. Which I still don't understand. And then where is the other one? I can't remember. Oh yeah, here it is. Here's one of the coolest ones I own. The Vanguard Smoke Sonic. People really got interested in buying this after they saw that I got one. Looks like a bell. Now I'll go on to my Vulcan heat bell that I have. This one's heavy. Very heavy. And then we'll go to my two Captain Kellys. Here is my 941. This one's incredibly loud, by the way. Um, and then my 929 with the horn inside of it. You can kind of see it, actually. This one's the battery-operated 12.6-volt one. Um, that has the squealer horn instead of the AC buzzer because of the... Um, Here's another 12.6 volt alarm. This one was my probably my most expensive purchase. The West Clocks something. I forget the model actually. I how do I already forget? And then we have probably three more iconic detectors I own. These are the last three, and then we're done. My Sears 350.5045, this is F900D based. And that's the only Sears I have because Sears are overpriced. Here is the Smoky Stover 4002, one of my favorites in my, own, in my collection. And it's got the Goofy Og character there. Um, very cool unit. And I saved the best for last, the Teledyne Waterpick D2. You've all seen this one before. If you guys watch my channel, you know this is my absolute favorite alarm. It's got the awesome warble sound effect. Um, I can't demonstrate that right now because I've recorded this video for so long. It's so late. So you guys can go watch the unboxing video. And if you guys want to see video overviews on some of these alarms, um, you guys can let me know in the description of what smoke alarm you want me to make an overview on. And I'll make a video on it. And... It'll be forever on YouTube until they've been taken down. So, yeah, Waterpick D2, my favorite smoke alarm, and that is the end of this masterpiece.